Hi, I'm Simon, owner and master craftsman here at McKenzie's. And here's how to care for your McKenzie leather bag. McKenzie's is a small independent Edinburgh leather goods brand. We make a range of classic timeless leather pieces, briefcases, gladstones, traditional belts, shoulder bags, and various accessories. Essentially what we're doing when we're caring for our leather bag, or more importantly, your McKenzie leather bag, is you're, you're maintaining the integrity and the natural oils within the leather. The leather care we use and have used for a long, long time is made by an English tanner called j and &E Sedgwick. Um, in my opinion, as a professional, as someone who's used it for a long time to, to maintain not only their own products, their personal products, and for, for any repair work or, or um, restoration projects that we do, is, is the most natural on the market, really. Three ingredients, beeswax, fat, and neat's foot. It's all you need for quality leather. So for demonstration, we've got a, a 15 year old rucksack here, uh, which is, has just been returned to us for a wee bit of TLC. Um, this is actually my first rucksack that I ever made, um, which is really nice to see it back in its glory. It is, however, needing a wee bit of a drink, but it's a, a prime example to show you uh, what happens when bags are not polished um, at all. So you can see here, we've got a wee bit of uh, color fading where the, the, the surface, uh, the top surface of the leather has actually come away ever so slightly. Um, if we were maintaining a regular feed to the bag, this actually wouldn't have happened because this discoloration is essentially the leather losing its natural oils and fats within the leather. Okay, so now um, I'm going to show you very simply how to how to feed your bag. Um, again, using the, the natural leather care. What we generally recommend is having two cloths. Now, we're not saying go out and buy cloths. You can do. Uh, make sure that the a nice natural cotton. Um, I'd advise not to use any of the dust cloths because they leave, they leave a lot of fur and residue over the over the product. Um, you could use an old t-shirt. You could rip up an old t-shirt. There's, there's many things you can do. We do provide a um, uh, a nice cloth with our leather care pack, um, but any any kind of rag will do. Um, but yes, we have two cloths, one for applying and then one for, for buff, buffing off. So go sparingly, but you know, don't be shy, especially if it hasn't had a drink for a while. So what we're doing is we're applying in circular motions a bit at a time. Now it's quite important to stress that you can't really, you can't really overdo it. Um, not, not in this form. If you were using a, a, a pure neat's foot oil, uh, then yes, you do have to use it very, very sparingly. But with our leather care, you know, I do advise using it sparingly, but at the same time, don't be shy. So you can see here that that uh, fading that you saw earlier has completely gone now. And now, it's soaking in to the to the leather itself. So in this stage, all we're really doing is applying the feed and letting it absorb. Ideally, the advice I, I generally give folk is put it on overnight, let it soak in, and then the following day you can buff it off. But uh, here at McKenzie HQ, where we don't have a, here's one I prepared earlier. 
So I'm just going to leave that to soak in here. Again, you know, I'm not really adding too much to the cloth at any one time because you can just repeat the process as many times as it needs. And it really is an intuitive process. You know, it's like how you look at your shoes and you think, okay, today I need a polish or the shoes need a polish. Okay, uh, I would say I'm about done on this front. So now with the, the first coat applied evenly and sparingly throughout the bag, you can now take your second cleaner cloth, which is purely just for buffing up. So in a similar process, I, I always prefer to do the circular motion because you can seem to, to massage it in and maybe it's the military in me somewhere, who knows. Polishing the boots, polishing the bags, nice circular movements brings a nice even buff. And that can be, you know, you can spend a few minutes, a minute, ten minutes, you can spend as little or as much as you like in order to get the desired sheen. Or you can add another another layer. Really, you cannot overdo it. As you can see already, that's really brought up the color immediately. Not quite how it went out on day one, but much better than it was. So yeah, I'd like to just to add how regular, how often shall I polish my Mackenzie bag or my, my leather bag? Um, as little and as much as you like, really. Um, it, it's it's quite vague. I think the main thing is that you do it at some point. Um, you know, whether you are to do it every week as a as a weekly ritual or quarterly, monthly, annually. You know, it's an intuitive process, especially if it if your bag has been exposed to extremes, as in you know it's been soaked completely through with rain and you would leave it to naturally dry out, not in a heated room or next to a radiator. Um, so let it dry out naturally, and then you, you essentially do this process and replenish the oils. Or if it's in the opposite of that, and it's in a very dry climate, and it's exposed to sun, then you'll be repeating the same, the same process. And I, I, I do want to stress that it is an intuitive process. You know, just look at your bag and if it's looking a wee bit dry, then give it a drink. Again, you can't overdo it. And there we go. That's one quenched bag. This was how to care for your leather bag. I hope you found it useful and uh, see you next time. Go give your bag a drink. <laughs>